Say what? So oftentimes in speaking, we'll say a word and realize after we've said it, oh, did I say that word correctly? Or perhaps we might hear somebody say a word and we think, oh, how do you say that word? Now, granted, there are alternate pronunciations for words in the American language, uh, depending where you're from and so forth. However, some words I hear pronounced and I, and I for this video, I'd like to clear it up so it's very clear for you and you no longer have to make that mistake. So in this video, I'll show you this set of words here and we'll go through each one and clear them up once and for all. Let's get started. You're going to get coffee and your friend says to you, get me an espresso, espresso. Well, the thing is, there is no K in this writing, in this way you write the word espresso. It's just an S, espresso. So when you say espresso, and if you're doing it for fun, because listen, in my own life, I know sometimes I'll take a word and uh, with my friends, maybe mispronounce it on purpose. We'll have our own little, you know, coded way of saying a word. And that's absolutely great. You get to do what you want to do. And in speaking and in going to the business world and be take, being taken as a professional, it's nice to know really what the word is and how it is most commonly and accepted uh, pronounced, how it's pronounced most acceptably. I can speak. Espresso, not expresso, espresso. No k sound involved. Next, we've heard this word. Uh, where they'll say nuclear, nuclear, but it's not, it's nuclear, 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 nuclear. So we'll say the nuclear power plant. I got some espresso that had, I got some espresso at the nuclear power plant. Kind of an odd sentence, but it might happen. Next, the word ask. You might hear this and it happens in different parts of the country where people will say, I want to ask you a question. And basically they reverse this K and this S. Ask becomes ax. And um, that really isn't the way you say it. You say ask. So just really simply forget about this. This is the possibility of saying asks as if it were a singular subject. She asks, he asks. Uh, but we'll just keep it for ask right now. So we're just going to say ass, <gasps> ass, <gasps> ass, <gasps> and add the K. Ask. Ask. Good. And there you have it. Now, when you say he asks, if you're very careful and can say that S, then the back of your throat closes for the K, and then you get the S. Double points for you. Every day he asks me the same question. Every day he asks me the same question. Try that. Awesome. Now by itself, just ask. They ask all the time. I ask all the time. Great. So the S comes before the K. Our next example, realtor, which is actually a copyrighted term. So I suppose a little copyright or register term up here. But um, for right now, we'll just go ahead and leave that off. Realtor. Oftentimes, and even growing up, I would say realtor. Realtor. Adding this little O uh sound here. Kind of like nuclear. We just add these extra sounds. And sometimes people say them so often that they become part of the acceptable grammar or acceptable pronunciation of those words. However, for right now, as we are in this, in this year, we would not say realtor, realtor, take out the la and say realtor, realtor. And this is an er sound, just like we wouldn't say actor, he's an actor. This or becomes er, realtor, realtor. I don't know, I'll have to ask my realtor. And finally, we have this word asterisk. Asterisk. Now, oftentimes, and the asterisk is that little symbol right there, that little star or lines going in a few different directions. Asterisk. Oftentimes, we will mispronounce this and say asterisk. Asterisk. Now, 
There was a character, uh, when I was taking Latin in high school, uh, there was a comic book, Asterix, and it was about a, um, a person named Asterix. But this is an asterisk, meaning it's an addendum, an idea. So when you have an asterisk, like the word risk, take no risks, when you have an asterisk, you have then a little star here, and that will take you down to another part of the page where it will tell you a further explanation of what's being asterisked to make asterisk a verb. But we'll keep it as a noun. And text. To receive a text from a friend. Or I got many texts. And that's hard. Whenever we have these combo consonant combinations, k -t -s. try that, K-T-S. I know, text. That really becomes a K sound. Text. That's hard. But we'll give it singular text. Text, text. You can say that. Now, oftentimes, or once in a while, I'll hear somebody say, um, well, I sent him Texas. I sent him Texas. So it sounds kind of like the state uh, in, in the United States, uh, the second largest state in the United States, Texas. Texas. And uh, it's not Texas, it's texts, texts. And always, these are challenging for either the foreign speaker or when we're first learning to say these words or when we're learning to break a habit that we've gotten ourselves into. So just give yourself time to break it down. We'll just start with here, like here, we'll just go texts, texts, texts. So it's a KS sound, texts. But you want to make sure when you say this actual word that we have the T, text. So K-S-T, text, text. And then if you can, just add a little S afterwards. Texts. She texts me all the time. Try that. She texts me all the time. I received so many texts from him. And not Texas. I got Texas. It is no, there is no E after this. Text is, no, just texts. So these are challenging words. They got a little bit more challenging as we went along in this row. Uh, I have more of those words I want to share with you because it's so nice to know what really is the proper pronunciation. Be clear and direct, then make a choice. Do I want to have fun with the word and say it the way that I want to say it? Or do I want to try to, you know, have a nice professional, uh, educated way of speaking? By speaking in an educated manner, using your full voice, using your articulation, intention, you can achieve what you want to achieve in this life. So taking these few words, breaking them down, making them very clear for yourself, and really practicing them so that next time you do use the word texts in a conversation, it can just roll off your tongue proudly, bravely, correctly, as of now. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.